money as we welcome our man Jason Jones in here. Jason Jones, of course, of the Athletic, formerly covering the Sacramento Kings, now covering uh, the entire league. I heard that you are you 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 you're writing about linebackers, offensive line. Yeah, uh, am I? You just did some on the offensive linemen in their oh, way. No, that was a retweet of an older story, though. I didn't write that. That wasn't new. Ah, oh, I saw that today. I thought it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, somebody, uh, my editor was retweeting some of the best stories of 2021. So that's what that was. I was like, am I? I'm like, I'm, I didn't turn that in. <laughs> Do you, well, I'm you, not you, Kings right now. I'm, I'm not missing that at the moment. It felt mm. good on Sunday to see that score and say, I'm not watching it. <laughs> Like I'm just not going to do it. I, I refuse to do that to myself. I will not. They will not steal my joy. No, nah, can't can't do can't do it. We've we've had a discussion, and I have coined the phrase, and maybe it's a little harsh, but find the lie. I was like, this group right here. We talked about it before. De'Aaron, I put Tyrese in there. Rashawn Harrison, uh, Buddy, and Marvin. All they do is get people fired. Like that's all they do. They didn't got coaches, GMs fired, uh, hot seats. And Damian brought up a good point indirectly. I mean, you're not fired, but they've wiped out some of the media because they've been no good for this whole time. I mean, it's crazy that this group continues to be together with, with nothing really positive happening around them. Yeah, it's amazing that just because th this group won 39 games, they were able to get Dave Yeager fired. <laughs> just because, <Jeez. laughs> wow. Because they didn't like him. And then you get them a coach they say they like, so they go out there and just go whatever, and they get him fired. And then everyone's like, well, maybe Alvin can get it out of him, and Alvin's got the exact same problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel bad for Alvin. Alvin looks like he's been there seven years already. <laughs> My man, just, just, you know, and the crazy thing about it, when Alvin's like, that was ridiculous for what he's seen in his career. That ain't even the worst I've seen or heard about this. I mean, I they lost by 50 one game. I mean, <laughs> oh, I mean, I've seen them go to several arenas and just lay down and just, just get molly whopped. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that was bad, and you know, but. I feel bad for you guys. You guys were on, you know, no, no, Kenny, you were on the whole John Moran over De'Aaron thing. And I'm, and I'm, on, the front line. What, I'm on the doing? front lines and now they got me looking crazy. Yeah. We're talking about <laughs> look how they doing you. Look how they doing you. <laughs> look, we you, you talk about best of 2021 when Casey posted that and you retweeted Kenny lost his smile. <laughs> I don't think I stopped laughing for 15 minutes. <laughs> That was one of the best tweets of the year. <laughs> Kenny lost his smile. <laughs> Y'all stole Kenny's smile, yeah, man. Ain't gonna be in that All Star. He he looked like an All Star, Ooh, you know. Man. Doing his thing. Man, Memphis, please. by the way, I meant to mention this earlier. Memphis, only team in the league to beat Phoenix and Golden State. They've also beaten Utah, the top three wow. teams in the Western Conference. Mm. Wow. I think all on the road too. I think they were all on the road. Mm. Man, wow. Yeah, that and, ain't, they won, yeah. and they won a bunch of games with their best player out. That's wild. That That's crazy. crazy. What was it like, ten and two or something yeah. like that? That's it's amazing what happens when guys try to play defense and you know play hard and come out, stick to a game plan, look disciplined, give great effort. It's amazing what you can do on a basketball court. What the hell's going on here? Because the the all a lot of the characters change, but the problems remain the same. And I know front office is probably you know one of the first things that people want to go to but i talked about this when i talked about like the aaron fox um or anybody else not just the aaron like getting beat down by the losing i know it's a lot i know it's different for for me to say it as opposed to being into it but the winning and losing almost that's the front lines you got the direct ability to change that with your play or getting guys together. Um, what, what's going on? What do you think is in the head of these players right now where they seem, seem to be the laughing stock every year in the NBA? I don't think these teams respect them at all. They come in here thinking they can just, you know, punk them and slap them around and they end up doing that. Where is their head at when the uh, a bunch of guys around them have been fired and moved on, but yet we still see the same basketball night in and night out? I mean, they the get right team. You know, you struggling, you come to Sacramento mm -hmm. and you get right. You know, you know they're not gonna. 
<laughs> what are they going to do about it? They're not going to try to stop you. And I, I just wonder, I think Terrence Davis mentioned it. Who's the leader? Mm. Have they had a leader since Amon Shumpert? No. And, and it's crazy to think, you, people, you know, people around the league will probably laugh and go, Iman Shumpert was a leader, but he was in this group. And, but remember, they were all about, you know, the character and good, nice guys. And so you get Iman out of here. And I just wonder who in there, I don't, I don't say, ga- I mean, because I'm a big believer and you can't make a grown man do anything. You can't ask another grown, you know, you can't make a guy you know, hey, go out there and play harder. He's going to do it because you said so. But there mm-hmm. is a thing about leadership, and I just wonder, who is that guy? Do they? Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been looking for that guy for years. I mean, it's insane that going into this year, they were looking at Davion Mitchell to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Poor guy. Yeah, you know, God, Davion's going to come in and demand guys play defense. Are you serious? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's. I just, I just really question just, the, the the mental makeup of this group like you know what well, somebody asked De'Aaron about it, he said you want me to say it again it's the same thing every year hmm. and, and and with this group if you go back to the guys you mentioned to 2019 we've seen the same thing when the going gets tough they get punched in the mouth and lay down mm-hmm. whether it was you know whether it's being three or four games above 500 with 20 something games to go and then you stop you go nine and 16 to lose close of the year whether it's going to the bubble and getting just punched in the mouth (laughs) you know we see this with this group you know whether it's the last season a bunch of losing streaks and then you have to wait till De'Aaron gets hurt (laughs) or De'Aaron's out with COVID and all of a sudden you you know the fight comes back I mean it's it's the same thing and if you you know and if you're you know if you're De'Aaron a lot of the attention has to go to him because like I've said before their two best stretches of defense in the last, what, two or three years have been when he's hurt. Mm. And that's not a good look. And, yeah. I, you know, it's – I don't know, who, you know, when they're, they're they're kind of married to this team just because of the, the cap situation. You got to – how do you break it up? What do you do? Who do you move? I don't know. But you can't keep thinking bringing back this group of guys is going to get you something different. Mm-hmm. You think this season's at the point – like, is this season dead – uh, based on this group's history and the way they approach the game far too often, it's, it's close to it. Mm-hmm. Because I don't I don't have any confidence that all of a sudden this same group of guys is going to decide, you know what? We're going to take the game plan seriously. <laughs> We're going to focus and play defense every night. I, I have no reason to believe they will because mm-hmm. we've heard this from these guys. You know, we know we have to do only we're we're the only ones who can save ourselves you know we've heard this over and over again it was like people made fun of luke for saying it you know i gotta go watch the film now alvin's gotta go watch the film now (laughs) then then doug had to go i mean it's the same (laughs) i don't understand how king's fans do it quite honestly i mean it's one thing to you know to be a bad team but to be a bad team where people question your effort every other night where people say you know you look at some of the – I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of bad teams in the NBA, but there's bad teams that play hard every night. They're mm-hmm. just not good. Mm-hmm. To be a bad team and then you got – you know, how many times has Alvin already said, basically, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed? Oh, mm-hmm. man. I mean, like I said, they, they doing my boy Alvin wrong. I mean, yeah. I just have no faith this group is going to change who they are. I just, I just don't. I mean – Maybe they'll surprise all of us, but I've seen no reason to believe that this group is all of a sudden going to say, you know what, we're going to change what we've been for the last three or four years. To me, the only way you change is you got to change the players. You mm-hmm. got to you got to break this thing up. And it's like I said, Vlade got fired for putting this group together. Why are we going to believe that this same group is somehow going to become a good team? I just don't see it at this point. When you got guys, um, and this is no secret, it's not to say. I know it might come off this way, but to say it's all their fault, I'm not necessarily saying that, but you got guys in Marvin Bagley and Buddy Hill who they, they're they looking to get out of here. They don't want to be here. Do you think that having that in the locker room, even though it seems they get along with the guys personally, but having that type of energy in the locker room can be something that can bring down a locker room as well? Or is this just the nature of pro sports? Other teams deal with it as well. 
I think, I mean, teams deal with it. I don't think that Marvin and Buddy are necessarily disruptive, but I do think it does it does impact the, the, a group when they feel like they've been lied to or mis, you know, misled or guys who are led to believe they wouldn't be on this team anymore and they still are. Mm. So, I mean, that that does that that can be an issue because what it tells the other guys in the locker room is we can't believe what we're told. I mean, look back at what happened down in New Orleans when where J.J. Reddick says he was told by David Griffin, we're going to get you out of here. And J.J.'s just sitting there like, okay, what are you doing? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. you know, guys hear that, and even though it may not have applied to them directly, when guys, when there's not a tr- level of trust between what, what, what they feel like they're hearing, and I know that for a fact is how Buddy and Marvin have felt. Like, okay, what's going on here? You know, it, 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 it shows up on the court. I mean, guys are trying to play to get traded. I mean, guys are going, you know, Buddy going to get them shots up. <laughs> mm-hmm. he, you know, he's, you know, and I think, I think Buddy, you know, a guy like Buddy's still going to play hard. He's going to give his all effort. But, I mean, Buddy thought he was a Laker. He thought he was going to be in L.A. And here we are now. He's, you know, still coming off the bench, whatever the case may be. But that stuff does play, you know, that does play in the guys' minds. You know, guys wonder, you know, you know, a guy like Tristan Thompson, who's a veteran who might be able to help a, you know, a better team, you know, mm-hmm. what do you do with him? I mean, there's a lot to consider. I mean, at this point, I'm all for them playing Damian Jones a lot of minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, wh- you know, what's the point? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the fans aren't dumb. You can't sell them on this notion that this is a playoff team. No one's buying it. And I think even if, if you, if you go that route, at least you give people something to look forward to and say, you know what? Maybe they're going to really shake this thing up and not go with the status quo. But it's just, I mean, it's, like I said, I'm glad I don't have to watch it. Mm. You know, I can turn it off now because, I mean, it's not fun to watch. Jason Jones of The Athletic with us here on D'Lo and Casey. That's one of the weird things about this, fellas, is, you know, we alluded to this earlier and we'll, we'll give you the numbers now. And it's one of those weird playoff scenarios where a bunch of things have to happen. But there's a scenario the Kings win games this week. The, the, there's there's two different scenarios. The Kings could be in last place by 2022, like dead last, below Houston. They could also be in seventh. <laughs> that, that, that's the, that's the, the, and that's not, that's not, oh, look, Kings fans, it's not so bad. It's That's the shape of the Western Conference. Yeah. They got a game against Oklahoma City, who they're competing against here for positioning. And, and then you've got these two games against Dallas, which – Again, who knows what Minnesota is going to do, what the Lakers are going to do, what the Spurs are going to do. But, you know, 10th, 9th, they could be in 10th by tomorrow night yeah. if they get the job done, you know, heading into that Dallas game. It's, I know it, again, it feels bad, but this conference is terrible and, you know, the Kings are just mixed up in the terribleness. Yeah, and that's what makes it so funny. I think it was last week, I was like, oh, God, they look awful. Wow, they're right there. But I just don't have faith in them to finish the job. They lost like <laughs> two games in a row and moved up a spot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's. I just don't like I said. I just don't have faith on them that if we get to say March and they're in the same spot, spot they're going to finish the job. I have no faith they'll do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's 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 weird. It's wild because if if they lost to OKC tonight, I don't think anyone would even be shocked. No. And that's what's crazy about it. I mean, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, they lost to OK. I'm like, OK, they lost to OKC. I mean, it wouldn't if Shea. Without their coach. In, yeah, my, yeah, shout out to the homie Mike Wilkes. You know, he, he has some Sacramento ties. He knows my man Gus Armstead. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Mike comes in there and gets a win. I mean, if Shea's playing, I mean, we've seen Shea go, go against the Kings and do whatever he wants. <laughs> Lou, Lou would, Dort is a nightmare. I don't think anybody on here would be shocked if Shea goes for thirty. Yeah. Lou Dort is a nightmare type of player for the King. He, he's somebody that just facts. He'll just backhand the Kings all night long. It reminds me of Tony Allen in the sense that whenever Tony Tony Allen would average eight points a game and then see the Kings would get twenty, <laughs> <laughs> it would help fail. Tony would get twenty on the Kings. <laughs> Lou Dort is the type of guy who's gonna like come out and get twenty five. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it's 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 funny, but it's also sad that we can also go into a game saying, okay, what guy who doesn't score is gonna get his season high tonight? Mm. And almost without fail, that guy will do it just because, well, they don't stop it. They don't stop anybody. Well, so let me ask you this, Jason. Going back to like 
um, the guys that don't want to be here, the distrust with the organization. You see this. I see this. Damien sees this. It's 2021. The fans see all this. What the hell is Monty McNair looking at? And like, when I say that saying, it's not a secret that Marvin and Buddy feel the way they feel. Yet, for weeks, after, even after Luke Walton got fired like three, four weeks ago, and it, nothing's changed. And you're just still trotting them out there like, hey, go be professional or we're working on something. Like, clearly that's not working. And I use this phrase a number of different times. Monty is just sitting here watching this season die, in my opinion. I know it takes two to tango, but at some point you can't get so – you can't uh, cut your nose to spite your face. You can't get so caught up on value and all this other stuff that you just let the season die, and then it's too late to even make a deal. Like, what What do you think his mindset is right now? Well, you know, the, the deadline with December 15th passed, which means a lot of those guys who couldn't be traded or now can be moved in deals. Even that, that was two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> I, you know, the one thing I've learned and from talking to people and even talking to Monty is that he's going to wait for what he believes is the right deal. I don't know what the right deal is because I don't know what you're going to get for this roster unless you're willing unless you're willing to part with De'Aaron. I don't know what you're going to get. You know, I mean, if you people I've talked to around the league, De'Aaron has value. Harrison has value in the right situation. Tyrese has value, you know. Davion probably still does as a you know as a guy on a rookie deal, but you know, and Buddy has value to a team in the right situation. But even still, what are you going to get? You know, if you look at the even the deal they had in the summer with the Lakers, you're bringing back a Kyle Kuzma and a and a Montrez Harrell for Buddy. You're not mm-hmm. bringing back all stars, mm-hmm. so I don't know what this move is going to potentially be. Are you waiting on a three four team deal and? But until you're, I think until you're willing to seriously consider parting with a De'Aaron or a Harrison or a Tyrese, I don't know what you're going to do because you're not going to take a team like Sacramento's spare parts and turn that into, I don't know, Brandon Ingram. <laughs> I even, not gonna happen. But look, Jay, I'm not even saying that. And and we're just talking about because we're talking about, I ain't trying to pick on them, but to get Putty and Marvin out of here for a second round pick, like they them being here is – they don't want to be here and they're sitting up here. You ask them to play and you ask them to perform. They don't want to be here. You're dying as a team and as a franchise, you're not going to get value. No, you're, you're going to lose the trade, but get them out. <laughs> Addition by subtraction. You got to find a team. willing. To, I mean, I, I, said, I still believe buddy has value and because his contract, you know, the value, the salary declines over the last couple of years, that helps. It's a matter of finding the teams that value buddy enough to pay him that salary and have something to send back, mm. you know, and the same thing with Marvin, I, there, maybe there's a team out there to take a flyer on Marvin, but mm. you know, Marvin makes about $12 million. So you got to make that add up. And, you know, are a lot of those teams who can maybe absorb that deal, you know, they don't want to take on a guy like Marvin. They don't want to take, they don't want to take that on, mm. but that even that being said, I'm 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 leaning towards you, Kenny, and the fact that you can't just sit around and go, you know what? We just got to get equal. You got to do. I think you got to shake this thing up somehow and start to break up these salaries you have. Mm. Because you know, if you look at, you know, I don't know which, you know, Oklahoma City did it for a while, where they would just, you know, be a team where you, they would take on deals and pick up draft picks. You know, maybe you get some draft capital, you you get enough picks to where you can turn those picks. And then maybe attach a couple of picks to a buddy, mm-hmm. you know, or someone, you, you know, because you no know, picks mean a lot now in, more than they maybe did 10, 15 years ago, you know, mm-hmm. attach those picks to someone and move them. But I still, I still just believe that as long as you're going to go into any team and tell them that De'Aaron, Tyrese and Harrison are untouchable, you know, mm-hmm. you're not going to get in, you're, you're not going to get an impact player in return. Yeah. Does this organization like break players yeah like we, okay that's pretty <laughs> yeah, direct I mean, all right I, I don't need to elaborate that was a direct answer <laughs> i've talked to guys and i've talked and they'll, they'll leave and they'll tell me man we had i think i had one guy tell me i didn't know what the nba was like till i left like he thought every team was like sacramento hmm. 
you know, and I think it eventually, you know, and that's one of the questions the scout had for me about De'Aaron. They that has Sacramento just broken him? <laughs> had, you know, do you think you it has? Him? I think I don't. I don't. I think on some level it has to. Like he said the other night, every level he he'd always won until he got to Sacramento and he hasn't won, mm. and that wears on guys. It, you know, especially when you don't see the trend toward winning. It'd be different if you're losing, but you say, you know what? We're making steps. We're making progress. I mean, De'Aaron's not dumb. De'Aaron can look around and be like, hey, man, we're not going anywhere right now. You know, you can you could argue that he's part of the reason why. But the fact is, this is this is what it is. They have no inclination to move him. So that means he has to sit and wait to see what they're going to do around him. And the fact that they passed on Luca thinking that De'Aaron wouldn't want to play with Luca and Luke and De'Aaron would not have had a problem with that, even though there, there was questions about, well, who has the ball and who doesn't. The fact that you're like, well, we can't draft a guy because that, that guy can't play with him. And the guy is saying, I would have loved to have played with him. <laughs> Those type of decisions players miss. I mean, they, I mean, and this is like a decade plus thing. I mean, there's guys, the Kings, you know, even going back to Petrie's days, they passed on guys because, well, DeMarcus wouldn't want to play with him. And it wasn't even true. No one even asked him. You know, mm-hmm. they pass on Dame Lillard because they don't want to, you know, we don't want to do this with Isaiah. You think Isaiah didn't want to play with another good player? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just had, they just continually do these things. And as long as you have those things going on, you know, I think you just kind of stay in this rut. And I, you know, so I don't know exactly how much I would say De'Aaron is broken, but. It, it doesn't – I know just from being around these guys and know, in this team for so long and knowing a lot of these guys, eventually they, they start to wonder themselves, what is it going to take because we don't get it. I mean, I've had players pull me inside and go, what will you do? What would you do? Because we don't we don't get it anymore. What would you do? <laughs> if you were uh, here, I, uh, I'd make would you try to get out of player, here? Would you, how would you I'd feel? I'd make every single player available. Hmm. I tell everyone, you know, this is, tell the player, it's not personal, <laughs> but we're not going anywhere. And I think you don't, you, you leave no stone unturned. You don't know what you might find out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to look at everything, you know? And I think, you know, for the past few years, they've looked at the front office they looked at the coaches, but Hey, maybe your players just aren't good enough. I mean, you can only blow the draft so many times for so many. I mean, for a team that's been in the lottery as long as the Kings have been, they have a shockingly low talent base. Mm-hmm. I mean, for as long as they've been in the lottery, they should at least have a bunch of guys they could trade to get a star. I mean, I know like you, I know the Lakers are a mess, but they at least got enough young players to say, hey, we can flip them for A.D. Mm-hmm. I mean, who could the Kings flip amongst their young guys and get a star, get a star back? Especially if you're saying we're not going to give up Tyrese, we're not going to give up De'Aaron. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to flip Buddy, <laughs> Davion, and a couple of other guys for a star. Yeah, and that's you know, and and that's not all on Monty. He, you know, his last two picks probably been two of the better picks in the last you know decade. But when you've when you've got this lack of talent depth that they have, you've got to just explore everything. You know what? If that means, you know, you've drafted a point guard with the last, you know, you got a bunch of point guards. If you got to move a couple of them, you have to look at that. That means, you know, if you like, if you like Davion and you keep him and you got to move some other guys, you do it. At least look at it. I don't think it's, it's wise for them to go into any situation saying that a guy is untradeable. I just don't I don't think that makes any sense for a team like Sacramento, because what do you it's not like you're trading a an all star. Right. You're, you're, you're basically holding on to a guy for the hope of what he might be. And that sounds good and all. But, you know, what does potential do? Potential gets everyone fired. Hmm. I don't understand that the the Davion Mitchell pick looks stranger and stranger to me. Because I don't feel like they know what to do with him. They don't feel I, I feel like they don't know how to utilize him because he's a third. He it's part of that. If Tyrese and De'Aaron can't figure it out, now you're throwing Davion in the mix trying to figure it out too. And it's like we know Davion's good. We know Tyrese is good. We know De'Aaron is good. But I don't think they've figured out how to make all of this work together. 
and what throws it off too is Davion's their best defender mm-hmm. coming <laughs> off the bench, right? <laughs> so it's right. Like, what do we do here you know he's clearly their best you know on ball defender so in that you know and and then i know after the draft people i would talk to would say okay they took davion who were they trading Mm -hmm. someone's got to go you know Mm -hmm. it just doesn't you know we see how tyrese plays when he's the lead guard we know how De'Aaron plays as the lead guard (laughs) like you you can't you know the one thing you do when you collect all this talent, you got to do something, package it, and make a move. You mm-hmm. know, if you because you know you can't bank on signing someone, you can't you know figure something out. But yeah, it's it's a weird thing because you end up saying, "Well, can we play all three of them? Then can we play four guards?" I mean, <laughs> it creates all these weird scenarios that just don't. You're not going to be successful long term doing that, and it's. And in a lot of it's not the fault of the players, you know. It's it's not Davion's fault he gets here and they got two point guards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but I mean, I think yeah. because you know when Davion's healthy and he's on the court, the, the impact he makes defensively, he's got to be out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. But do you take do you take De, you know? But are you really going to sit De'Aaron for long stretches? Can you afford to sit Tyrese? You know, I mean, there's. It's a, it's a weird it's a weird mix and I it, it leads me to believe that someone has to get moved yeah. mainly because you know you have those three guards but then okay if you go with a three guard and rotation and you say Tyrese plays off the ball you still got Buddy still got Terrence you know there's still more guards and not enough wings mm-hmm. so then you're asking at least one of those guards to play more wing minutes and. I mean, have we not seen enough of poor Buddy being asked to defend small forwards? Mm, I have. <laughs> I mean, that's not Buddy's fault. That's not Davion's fault if he's got all of a sudden guard Kevin Durant or something crazy. <laughs> it's not his fault. That's a that's a result of the roster construction. And you know, you can't it is it's not Chemezi Metsu's fault if he, you know, if you're like, hey, no, you go guard that. These guys are, I think in a lot of cases, these guys are doing the best they can. The roster is just weird. They got all these bigs that you can't use <laughs> at the same time. I mean, it's just a weird mix. And I think in a lot of ways, you know, there's always going to be a guard who's an odd man out. It was Terrence at the beginning of the year. Terrence plays more, Buddy's minutes goes down. And I don't know how you manage it. But, yeah, it's. I just think eventually someone has to go at some point. When, I don't know. But, you just. I mean, you can't just keep drafting point guards. No. Do you think, uh, in your heart of hearts, do you think Tyrese and De'Aaron can play together and be successful, like be a playoff type backcourt? I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. playoff type, yeah. not def- defensively right now. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, they give me a lot of those uh, the vibes of that the, those Don Nelson Monte Ellis Warriors, mm-hmm. <laughs> where, where it might be fun to watch sometimes. We'll, we'll have the debate of, wow, is De'Aaron almost – remember Monte was always almost an all-star? Mm-hmm. He averaged like 27, 6, and 5, and he'd almost be an all-star. But they'd never win anything. They'd always win about 30-something games. Mm-hmm. And right now, mm-hmm. you know, depending on how Tyree – that's what they are right now, potentially. But at least Nelly's – those guys were at least a little more fun to watch. These guys aren't fun to watch sometimes. I mean, this is a fast team that doesn't, know, that it doesn't always play fast. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, you've got the fastest player in the league and you see him walking up the court. Mm. You know, you just don't, mm. you know, at least, you know, Monte was fun to watch all the time. Yeah. You know, but right now, that's, that's kind of the vibe I get from this. Just watching them is like, yeah, the, the, you know, almost an all star, you know, and unless you got a lot of really good players, you're, if your best player is almost an all star in the West, that's going to get you in the lottery. Hmm. You mentioned uh, your editor tweeting the best of 2021 stories. What was your favorite story that you wrote this year? Uh, let me see. Uh, probably a couple of the non-sports ones. <laughs> the John Singleton story was fun. You know, mm. finding young Doughboy, find out he mm-hmm. lives in Atlanta and he's a chef. <laughs> you know, just kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, kind of going back and, re- you know, doing that. And the date my st- from the hey, Kings wise, the Weber Hall of Fame story was 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 fun it's phenomenal yeah just because you got i mean i didn't realize he really hadn't told the whole laker trade story 
Mm-hmm. And we talked about 45 minutes just all tight. I mean, you know, some of that stuff I haven't even written yet because I know I want to get into his stuff about what he's doing with his um his fund to uh, get records with people with cannabis convictions that get the records expunged. I, mm-hmm. I hadn't even gotten all that yet. But I mean, that web story was just fascinating because we're playing basically playing phone tag with the PR people from the Hall of Fame waiting to hear from him. And then he realized it was me. And he calls me. I was to have 10 minutes. I got almost an hour. Mm. We talked That's about awesome. all, all type of stuff. And it was that, that was a lot of fun just because, like I said, I didn't know he never really told that story. And the, the fact that he he was waiting for Eddie Jones and Eldon Campbell and Nick Van Nexo to get shipped to sack. <laughs> so he could not he could never play in sack. <laughs> you, know, you know, and I think the, the Davion, the story we did about Davion was cool just because to, to learn about a guy who Everywhere he's gone, he's changed the culture or ha- affected the culture. Mm. He's got a hell of a job trying to affect this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know if that's – fact. I, I, I was joking before the year that if he somehow helped this team become decent defensively, he should be rookie of the year. But, I mean, he's Davion. He's not Jesus. I can't ask him. <laughs> I can't ask him to save the entire franchise like that. I mean, you know, he's not going to turn Gatorade into wine or, you know, <laughs> you know whatever. I mean, it's you were asking a lot, but just getting to know him and talk to people who know Davion, I mean, I really like what he, I think he brings to a team. I just, you know, just I hope the Kings can do enough around him to where, we're not looking at three or four years going, man, Davion had so much potential, but they just wasted it because they didn't do the right things around him. I just hope that's not the case for him. Yeah, me too. Real quick, on his birthday, what's your favorite? Man, it doesn't have to be the best, but your favorite Denzel movie. Ooh, ah, Training Day. Mm. Training Day. He was so good in Training Day, I almost wanted to be a cop. <laughs> Yo, <come on. laughs> gracious. I mean, I, I I wanted me an Eva Mendez, and I wanted me that Monte Carlo. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, he is so he, he's such a horrible human being, but his life looks so cool when they killed him. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> Jason's like, wait, he's the bad guy in that movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, was, I mean, me and my boys went to go see that movie. He was like, hold up. So he had Eva Mendez, that Monte Carlo. <laughs> I was like, he up here got this. He got Ethan Hawk over here getting high on the job. So, <laughs> so the funny thing is, Denzel wasn't a bad guy to everybody in that movie. <laughs> like, he was a bad guy to some people, but for other people, it was like, oh, I was like, okay. that was wrong, but I get why he did it. You know, <laughs> um, you're sitting there going, yeah, and the, the whole scene in the alley. He was like, yeah. Oh, you said, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, you messed with that young girl. He got him back. He, 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 you know, his, you know, what do you say? The ass are going to get him anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, Denzel was way too cool on that. And, you know, I actually wrote a story about that too, where even the professor I spoke to was like, I remember Denzel played that role. He said, what do you say? Denzel, that was really some of, you know, he said, the way Denzel said some of that stuff. <laughs> that was Denzel from back in the day. That wasn't, you know, a polished actor, you know. The way he the way he hit that cigarette and talked to Ethan Hawk in the car. <laughs> you know, he said that he said Denzel done dropped that word a few times at home. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't, you know, he read the script and say, Do I have to say this word? Denzel done said that with some brown liquor in his hand. I'm pretty sure. So you know, yeah, that, that's, that's probably my favorite that's my favorite all-time denzel that you know i like frank lucas clearly i like all his villains yeah isn't that like wrestling we we don't like john cena we like roman reigns <laughs> got the, yeah, the whole yeah, family roman, yeah. posing roman, with bloodline yeah. t-shirts <laughs> oh yeah yeah my kids we don't do christmas sweaters we do bloodline t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> That's great stuff, man. Well, happy new year. Thank happy you for year, all that you uh, uh, do for, for me and Kenny, man. Yes, we appreciate man, you. Sure. No problem. Anytime, guys. Y'all be safe out there. All right.